Welcome to Unit 3, Exploring the Memorandum. We have just finished how to set up a block style letter. So in comparison, the memorandum is set up very similar. It will use a two inch top margin, one inch side and bottom margins. The font size is 12. Font family is Times New Roman or Arial. As in letters, if you have a long memo, you will use Times New Roman. If you have a shorter memo, you can use Arial because Arial is a larger font. Also, if we look, go down to the bottom, we have proofers and initials just like we had in the block style professional letter. Just like in the letter, proofers initials are used only when the writer of the letter and the typist are different people. Remember, if you are the writer and the author, you do not need to put proofers initials because it's assumed that you typed up your own memo. Attachment and or enclosure is used. Attachment is used only when a document is physically attached or stapled to the memo. Enclosure is used when a second document is included with a memo but is not stapled. If you have no attachment and no enclosure, then you would not add these to your document. Where do you find if something is Included usually in the last couple of paragraphs is usually where the attachment or the enclosure is acknowledged. Now, what is different about a memorandum? First of all, if I double click on my header, I'm going to see that the heading, the um, inside, I have typed up the word memorandum. After I've typed up the word memorandum, I am to center the title, so I would come here and to my paragraph ribbon and click on the center icon, and then I am to add the title heading style. So I'll come over to my styles ribbon, and if you notice, here is my title heading style. So I will add that to the memorandum. First, add your title and then center. The memo heading includes four components, the to, from, date, and subject. To make sure that you have your spacing correctly, just like in a block style letter, make sure your formatting or show hide icon is turned on. Now, to type this out, you would type in two, and if you notice the two little arrows, those are tabs. So to hit the tab key, you will find the tab key to the left of the letter Q on the left side of the keyboard. Just in here, since we have two tabs, we'd hit the tab key twice. So I type in the word to, tab, tab, and then I would type who it's to. I'd hit the enter key twice, and then I am going to type in the word from, tab, once, and type who is the author of the letter. I would return twice, type in the date, and I know you can't see this, but there is a little arrow there, and he here's the second arrow. So that means you're gonna tab twice, and type in the full date. Then you're gonna return twice, type in the subject line, and you're gonna tab, and you would type in the theme of the memo. Then I would hit the enter key twice and I type up the body of the memo. Now looking closely at the memorandum heading, looking closely here, four components. If you look at the two from date and subject, you're going to notice that they are in all caps. Instead of having to worry about the cap key when you're typing, I would just type in two from date and subject in the regular manner. And then I will use a shortcut, which is my Alt and drag to select only my first vertical column. Once I have that selected, I can come up to the font ribbon, 
go into the toolbar section, click on the drop down, drop, drop down, and then I can put on uppercase. It's a quick and fast way to put everything in all caps. And then I would come down here to my memo theme and I could do the same thing. Just come up here and put it on uppercase. Another important detail to notice is if you look at the faculty and staff, the two and then the from, the date, actual date, and the actual theme, you notice that they are all lined up underneath each other. So there's these should all be lined up. That's what this line is pointing to, that all of these line up together. Again, how did I select only that? My Alt and then my Drag. So I can select the second vertical column. So, you have learned about your memorandum title. What's the difference between the memorandum title and the memo heading? The memorandum title goes inside the header by double clicking. The memorandum heading has four components, the two from date and subject. Now to add a border, we're going to go to design come over to page border, select page border, and at the top of the border and shading box, you're going to see a border tab, a page border, and a shading. You want the page border. If I want to put in an art tab, I would come down here, and then I can scroll through to find the tab that I want. I can often change the color, and I can change the width. If I do not want an art tab border. I come over to the settings and I can do a box, a shadow, or I can do a 3D. I can also change the color and I can scroll down to change the type of border that I want. So let's say, let's say I want this type of border and I want blue. Then all I have to do is say okay. And now my border has changed. Control Z will return it back to the way it was. Let's say I want to add a page color. If I click on my drop down, I have standard theme colors, or I can go to more colors and I'll get a color wheel. I can also go down to fill effects, and I have the option of one color, two colors. Or I can come down here and change my colors. So, I, and then I have variants that I can use. I can also click on preset. Under my preset colors, I have many options that I can do as well. So, I can come down here and go to shading styles, and I can click on these, and I can see different shading styles, and I can click on different variants. I also have texture. You, often the parchment is used for resumes, but there's different types of parchments that you can use, and I can scroll down to see more. I have patterns, and I can also upload a picture. Last but not least, we have our watermark, and we have text watermarks such as confidential, do not copy. If I use my scroll bar, I also have draft, sample, urgent, ASAP. I can also come down and customize my watermark. So if I want to customize my text, I can go here and change the font family. I can change the size of my text and I can change the color of my text. I can also change whether I want it diagonal or horizontal. If I want a picture watermark, I can click on picture watermark and then go and select the picture that I want in my background. The only thing you have to be careful about with pictures is that once you insert your picture that you can still read your text. The picture should be theme appropriate in regards to what the memo is about. Last but not least is our themes. I know I already said that. 
If you look at the memo title here, as I run my cursor over the themes, you're going to see the theme changes. So you can also add a theme to your letter. So we have covered the basics of a memorandum. I appreciate your listening and participating. You are now going to format a memorandum on your own. Make sure you download this document, your rules, and then view it side by side with your activity. I wish you the best of luck and have lots of fun.